In this lesson, you'll learn how to use API demos along with the graphical layout editor to create display layouts. As you can see on the worksheet in the layouts entries, starting here, there's a sizable number of different types of layouts and variations within those. But to get a handle on all of this, let's first take a quick look at the layout API demos. And there are too many subgroups and demos to go through every one. So we'll just look at samples of each different type. So to find them, we click on Views, Layouts, and we'll click on Baseline. The Baseline demos display simple examples using attributes such as gravity to determine where to place elements on the screen. So for example, the bottom demo places elements along the bottom of the screen. Grid layout demos use a grid view tag to arrange elements, such as in this simple form, placing elements inside of a grid. The linear layout and relative layout we've already looked at in another lesson. Scroll view demonstrates scrolling lists, such as in this long demo. And table layout demo shows options using the table layout tag for using rows and columns to display data, such as in this basic demo, where you have three rows and three columns. And the approach to implementing these layouts is basically the same as we've seen in the linear and relative layouts we explored in a previous lesson. The Java code uses a set content view method to establish a layout in which the type of layout is declared on the detailed attributes that are included in the various tags within the layout XML. Sounds simple, however, one of the challenges in developing layouts and all of their piece parts is the vast number of options available for types of display objects, positioning them on the screen and formatting and so forth. And one approach to handling this complexity is to use the API demos coupled with the graphical layout editor. So it works like this. First, you'd use the API demo worksheet and the API demo app to identify a starting point that's the closest to what you have in mind for your screen display. So let's say you wanted a simple table layout. In line 237 on the worksheet, we see a basic table layout. So if we click table layout and basic in the demo, we see that display. And in the worksheet, we see that the Java file name is table layout one. So now let's look at the code in Eclipse. In the views source folder, we look for table layout one. We'll open it. And we see that the set content view uses table underscore layout underscore one. We'll go back and open that in the layouts table layout one there it is and if we click on the graphical layout we see the screen with the options for manipulating the objects on the layout screen so let's expand this so we can get a better view and we can increase the size and let's say we wanted to add a row so here's the add a table row button we'll click on that and now let's say we wanted to add a chronometer to this row. Here's the chronometer. Click and hold. Move it over here. We're going to put it in the row that we just added. And there it is. And now let's look at the XML. And we see that it's added our chronometer tag and attributes. And we also see that it's flagging an error. And the error is basically telling us that we need a string for chronometer instead of hard coding it in the text attribute. So from here, we could add a string in our strings file, as we saw in the lesson on providing resources. So what the graphical layout editor did was to choose basic attributes for our chronometer object, the ID, width, height, and text. And it also created a starting point for the other rows and columns in our table. Now, if we go back to the graphical layout, click on our chronometer, we see the attributes associated with it. And we could, for example, change the text size to, let's say, 30 SP. 
and we see that the text size increased in the display. And if we go back to the XML code, we see that the text size attribute has been added at 30 SP. That's our lesson on creating layouts using the API demos and graphical layout editor. And these tools can be a big help in mastering user interface design and implementation.